Welcome back to Kababayan today. It is April, which means it's Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Uh, it's a very uncomfortable topic kasi miski ako, pinag-uusapan natin parang, uh, you have to pick your words carefully. You know, you don't want to offend anyone, but at the same time, you want to be able to help people that have gone through this. It's never their fault. Uh, I hear that a lot, lalo na kapag may taong na-rape, yeah. or na sexually molested mm -hmm. palagi yung tanong eh ah, ano ginawa mo ano yung suot mo di ba mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you can't blame the person who has gone through this and that's usually always the case that's the first reaction nobody says i want to be raped exactly you know nobody says i wanted this to happen to me uh -oh. you know, so it's you it really is sad if you blame the victim then it also makes them also not want to ask for help even more uh oh ang babae lang ba ang victim no, dito everyone male female old, other genders yeah. old young well it doesn't discriminate everybody gets affected by this okay yeah. let's talk about sexual trafficking because I know that that is your area of expertise Pauline um, ano ba talaga ang diferensya ng sexual trafficking ibig bang sabihin nun eh pinagtratrabaho ka para bayaran ka for sex yes so by US federal law the definition of sex trafficking is whenever you coerce whenever you force a minor again someone who's under 18 into performing a sexual act in lieu or in exchange for anything of value. So that could so, be so money. So, hindi lang, hindi lang pera. Yeah, could be Kunwari, money. Kunwari, bibigyan ka ng kotse. As simple as, mm -hmm. Yeah, as simple as clothes. As simple as a roof over your head, like um, a night at a motel room. Or as simple as giving them a ride. As long as it's a sexual act and there's something uh, of value that's being exchanged, then that's human. That's sex trafficking. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, an estimated one million Filipinos each year migrate abroad for work mm -hmm. that's a staggering amount our that's biggest okay. export is mm -hmm. its people yes right mm -hmm. uh, can you share with us some statistics in terms of children children traf uh, trafficked um, yeah here yeah, yeah here in America so, uh, right now there's an estimated 300,000 American children who are being trafficked in the US that's American children these are kids that have been grow growing up here 4.3% of that are Asian Americans. So that's a staggering 12,000 Asian Americans. Hundreds of those could be Filipinos. Uh -oh. And that's every year. Every year lang yun. Uh -oh. And then, so yeah, it's just, just such a big spotlight on human trafficking. Uh -oh. It's happening. It's not happening outside of our country. It's not happening, you know, in Cambodia or Thailand or in the Philippines. It's happening here in L.A. It's big here in L.A. Okay. Yeah. Um, as we know, this happens also in the Philippines mm -hmm. so rampantly yeah. that it's mm -hmm. become, you know, a sort of tourism destination for mm -hmm. sexual trafficking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, nakakatakot yun, hindi ba? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, kasi, lalo na kapag nasa uh, Pilipinas ka, tapos sasabihin sa'yo, sige, dadalhin kita sa Amerika, ha? Tapos pagdating mo dito, yun pala, yung ipapagawa sa'yo, you know that yeah. these sexual Sex. acts and that's one of the biggest or common ways that they get a lot of our Filipino um, kababayans you know is the promise of a better job the mm -hmm. promise of a high paying job the promise of becoming a US citizen or becoming a, a legal resident here that was pagdating nila dito then they start to they call it grooming so pa unti unti pa unti unti kanilang hahatakin like and then all of a sudden here, like you, you go and entertain this older man. You know, it could be a lap dance, it could be a full-on sexual act, it could be just, just being there. You know, as long as again there's there's an exchange of anything of value, then these women are being trafficked. Okay, um, this is an uncomfortable situation oh, yeah. and conversation. It's not easy to talk about this, mm -hmm. but I feel that it's important that we do because. Yeah. Um, it, it's so deeply ingrained in Filipinos na parang, ay, wag natin pag-usapan yan, pwede ba? Change topic, di ba? Mm -hmm. um, how do you begin to open the lines of communication mm -hmm. 
within our own families. Uh, Anna, could you give us some advice on that? Yeah, I think like you said, culturally, it's not something that's talked about or in the home, it's not talked about. But if you want people to talk about it, actually the best way to start talking about it is in the home. Yeah. Right, and I actually personally believe that it's part of good parenting because you want to teach them that you know a healthy relationship means that none of this is happening to you, right? Like if you have, or even healthy, healthy friendships, healthy, healthy partnerships, that this does not happen. So, um, you know, there are, we actually at SIPA we do have um, you know parenting classes that kind of help you think about how you might want to talk mm -hmm. to your child about mm -hmm. sex precisely because it's not something that we talk about at home but it's something that needs to get talked about. Yes, yeah. you know what? There is still so much to talk about which is why uh, we will be inviting our panel of women back on Kababayan today next Tuesday for Talk Tuesdays. Join us as we discuss sexual assault awareness. Uh, thank you ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.